Well, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. We are Sung Woo and Myung Jin from KAIST. And thank you for coming to our talk on Aeroplane, a handheld force feedback device that renders weight motion illusion on a virtual 2D plane. This work has been a collaboration between Woo Jin Lee and Byung Jin Lee from KAIST, Sing Dong Yang from college, uh, Dartmouth College, Pedro Lopez from the University of Chicago, and has been advised by Andrea Bianchi from KAIST. So let's dive right in. Imagine you got yourself a new virtual reality tennis game to play with your friends and family for Christmas. You set up your VR system, put on your headset, and you're ready to go. Now you're in the game, and it's your turn to serve. And you begin uh, warming up by balancing the tennis ball around on your racket. With the ball rolling around, suddenly you wonder, hmm, wait a minute, how is this supposed to feel? And what would I need to make it feel real? Well, intuitively, you would need to perceive two things, the weight of the ball and its movement. And if you could somehow render these feedbacks, then we should be able to feel a moving tennis ball on a racket. Or in other words, we should be able to create the feeling of a moving object on a handheld 2D plane. So how do we create this weight force and move that weight around? Well, our initial idea was to generate the weight force using propellers and to move it around on rails. We made some prototypes with this approach but uh, they did not work as well as we expected. The propeller was fine, but the movement itself was so slow that we had to find a better way to make it happen. Fortunately, we found an approach that did not require physically moving the propellers, but still moved the perceived weight around. And here's how. Picture holding a rod with your hand, and if you place a mass on the rod, your hand becomes a fulcrum or a pivot point, and a torque is applied to your hand. Now, this torque is proportional to the distance of the mass from the hand. So if the mass moves farther away, a stronger force applies to the hand. Similarly, if you increase the mass on the rod, then it would increase the torque proportionally larger on the hand. Now, let's take away the masses and just picture holding two different rods. Thinking in reverse, without the masses, if you could create a downward pulling force on the rod somehow in different magnitudes, magnitudes, you can create the illusion of a changing mass at a fixed distance or change the distance from the hand for a fixed size mass. So using this, it is possible to perceive either the change in size or distance depending on the mental model of the user who is perceiving the torque. And because our goal was to create the perception of movement of mass, we provided the fixed mass size model to our users as you will see later in our talk. We applied this approach in an additional axis by using two propellers in total and created a model for rendering the weight of a mass on a handheld 2D plane at a desired location. Please refer to our paper for details if you're interested. And here is our prototype. So metal weights were added to the back to counterbalance the weight of the propellers in the front when they were not in use to neutralize. And each propeller had a thrust of around seven newtons to make a 14 newtons of total force. And by varying the thrust of each propeller, we could create varying torques around the X and Y, or the pitch and roll axes. Through our approach, we were able to achieve both goals of weight generation and object movement, specifically by using the illusion of movement without using additional moving parts. In relation to other works, here is where we stand. In terms of kinesthetic feedback, grounded haptic feedback systems can effectively and reliably render forces on the body as seen in works such as Freeflex, Cyberforce, Virtual Catchball, and Spider GNG. However, this approach is less practical when it comes to portability and freedom of movement, especially when involving multiple users in uh, the same space. More recently, an alternative approach to create the perception of weight was taken by utilizing sensory illusion, as seen in the works of Lopez and his colleagues using electrical muscle stimulation, um, gravity using vibrotactile and skin stretching, and SCORE and Okamura's work using skin stretching on the fingertips. In our work, we generate the actual force corresponding to the weight we want to render using the thrust from propellers. In terms of moving weights and shifting centers of mass, past works utilized physically moving weights that shifted along a set axis. Krakow and his colleagues created a telescopic gun interface to simulate uh, different guns in VR. Shifty, as you've seen before, used a moving weight to simulate changes objects length, girth, and size. And torque bar moved the weight laterally to simulate ball movement sideways and giving directional cues. In our work for moving weights and shifting the center of mass, 
we did not use a physical weight, but rather used weight motion illusion to achieve the same effect. Now, in terms of moving the center of mass in more than one dimension, there have been some interesting efforts, such as Transcaliber, which used two pivoting rails that moved uh, physical weights in two dimensions, and iTorq 2.0, which used a gyro effect to change the center of mass of the device in a continuously changing direction for mid-air twisting feedback. In our work, we used the torque applied to the hand in the pitch and roll axes from the propellers to move the perceived center of mass in 2D. Now, I mentioned propellers a lot, and in terms of using propellers, there are two notable works we want to mention. Thor's hammer used six propellers to create a kinesthetic feedback in three degrees of freedom at the end of a handle. And Levio pole used two drones mounted on the, each end of a long pole to stimulate kinesthetic resistance of water when you're kayaking or lifting barbells. So in terms of the focus of research and the type of feedback generated, our work focuses on rendering a shifting center of mass using weight motion illusion on a handheld 2D plane using thrust from propellers. Now, to build our system, we conducted a technical evaluation of our, our hardware. So each propeller can generate a force of up to 7.1 newtons, has 0.3 seconds of rise time, and generates an average of 93.5 decibels, which you probably heard yesterday at the demo session. <laughs> the force output of the propellers were linearly related to the pulse width input given, which allowed us to control the forces with relative ease. So now that you have an idea of what we made and how we made it, soon we'll be sharing you uh, some of our studies that we conducted and some of the interesting insights we got from our results. Take it away. So um, we focused on the understanding the user perception performance when colonizing continuous weight movement on a plane through haptic illusion. This means that we fix the weight of the object. This, the, this is the setup of our perception study. We had 10 participants, and they were noise-canceling headsets, and we played white noise to them. We asked the participant, please build a virtual ball rolling on a large 2D plane and respond. The virtual 2D plane is 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter, and the ball is 120 gram. It means that each propeller needs to generate 0.8 newton to 5.6 newton. They cannot see the device and can only feel the weight motion illusion. In the, in the study, we set 12 absolute locations and the ball moves horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. For, the, for example, the ball moves from left to right, and the starting absolute location is 1 and ND3. Here, these three examples are in the same direction, but different absolute loca locations. We also ask horizontal motion path and, and diagonal motion path. We have total 60 motion paths, and each motion path takes 2.4 seconds to complete. Participants had an accuracy of 68% for the 60 motion paths. In the interview, all participants responded that it was challenging to discern the exact starting and ending location of the motion. For example, four participants said that the left to right horizontal motion was among the most difficult, and three participants responded that four to five was easily confused at either one to three or six to eight. Also same in the vertical motions. However, when we only consider the direction of the motion path, all eight relative directions are equally well recognized with 81%. Also in our study, we found that although there was difficulties in distinguishing between absolute locations, users can approximately distinguish the distance of the object. To summarize, based on the result of our statistical analysis and subject interviews, we conclude that user could successfully perceive the first a weight motion illusion of an object moving on a plane. So how about combining visual with haptic feedback in virtual environment? How will weight motion illusion affect the user's experience? We conduct user study about realism and immersion with 16 participants. The first task consists of a metal ball freely rolling in any direction on a wood board, and the user can also experience the ball bouncing. The user can feel the object movement. 
The second task was about the realism of objects with different weight and physical characteristics. The user can experience holding different cooking tools with different lengths, weight, location of food, and amount of food. Participants experience both only visual and visual with haptic conditions and response to immersion and realism on a seven-point record scale. As you can see, we found that our device improved both immersion and realism. Our participants also point out that they felt immersed and enjoyed engaging with airplane. And for example, P1 said that it was very realistic that the position and the amount of food change is in the frying pan. In summary, we achieved known ground, which means the user is free to move in virtual reality, and the user can feel the different object and feel the movement of an object. We also had explored the potential of airplane for simula simulating different weight and shape of virtual object. Here we 3 printed a simple hand that, handle that can be attached to the original airplane and can be held using two hand. Mimic a gun grip, airplane is able to simulate the change the weight of the different guns and the, can generate kick bursts of strong feedback to create the illusion of muscle light. Airplane can enhance the flight game with force feedback. In this game, the tilt of the handle is mapped to orientation of the airplane's wings. Also, airplane can also effectively render continuous and dynamic force feedback. In the fishing application, the user holds the fishing profile, directional pull of the fish, and on the end of the fishing line, as well as the pull toward away from the user. Just look at smiling on his face. Um, the next step for further developing our project includes the following. As I think you guys already know about this. First, the noise is biggest limitation of our research. But surprisingly, when uh, the users of our application in the second study report that noise minimally impact their experience, also we will choose uh, better design of propellers to reduce noise. And second, we will apply the controller level system for change the direction of the wind. Uh, we will solve the air effects such as flow the face and it will help to develop more various application. Third, the weight and size of prototype depending on the maximum force rendered, which is the delivered from object and size of the 2D plane. So the study, we conclude that we can use a smaller jet propeller, which will make the next version of the prototype smaller and lighter. We also will try other scenarios. For example, first is multiple user scenario with multiple device. For example, tossing the ball and playing game with others. Another scenario is 3D weight motion illusion. For example, in study two, the participant enjoyed the kitchen application and they suggested it would be great to have a cooking scenario for cooking Chinese food uh, in a wok instead of a frying pan. Thanks for the listening and we will have to answer any question. Thank you. Uh, time for questions. Please put your hand up. Uh, as you ask questions, please state your name and affiliation as well. Uh, there's a Sean. Hi. Uh, oh, this is loud. <laughs> Hi, Sean Fulmer from Stanford University. Nice talk. Um, I'm wondering, so when we wield an object like you have there, there, there's rotational inertia, but there's also translational inertia. Yeah, right. And it, I'm wondering if you thought at all about future versions that could allow you to sort of move the device around in other ways, and as opposed to just having a moving ball be able to sort of seal, feel both the rotational as well as translational inertia as you're interacting with these different objects. <laughs> Actually, um, that's a good question. <laughs> we, 
So uh, it is maybe you have noticed in our prototype that we showed before, the previous prototype. It requires more degrees of freedom and more actuation involved. So technically, yes, we did try to directly move the uh, angle of the fans themselves to in consider the translation and inertia as well, but that would require more complexity. Mm, but it is definitely a direction we can think of in our future. Works. Thank you. Other questions? I've got one uh, about the responsiveness of the device. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you showed a ball bouncing on a pad. How, how responsive is your device in terms of maybe a force time curve or something like that? So in the device um, technical evaluation, we showed that the device has around 300 milliseconds of rise time, so to get to the force that we want to render. So any type of feedback faster than that would be difficult uh, with the current prototype, the hardware. But again, if you use better propellers with more capabilities, that would uh, increase, uh, the response time would decrease drastically, yeah. We've got time for one more question. All right, let's thank our speakers again. Thank you.